All right. So hello, everyone, and thanks to be here. I'm Loic Poulin, software engineer at Linero, and today I'm going to speak about some W1 modem in Linux. I have interest in that topics because I have developed some driver for new Qualcomm-based 5G modems. But yeah, before going in the technical details, a bit of history. So cellular network were launched in the 80s and that was initially designed for transporting voice over the air. So that was a replacement of the old mobile radio system branded as 0G. It's called cellular simply because uh, the network is distributed and divided over areas called cells and each cell is covered by at least one radio transceiver. And when you join all the cells together, it provides coverage over a wide geographic area. But over the year, and under the umbrella of the 3GPP consortium, cellular network or mobile network evolved to offer much more than uh, the usual voice. So here is a brief summary of the different cellular uh, version and the cellular network evolution. So starting with 1G, it was mainly about transporting analog voice. So the voice was simply modulated at a higher frequency and it was using what we call circuit switch technology. So with circuit switch, the caller allocate a dedicated circuit or pass to the callee, so to the destination. And after that, in the 90s, the 2G was launched and it is the, the most popular known. It's known as GSM and it was introducing digital voice. So the voice was this time uh, encoded in bytes and that was allowing more user encrypted data and also roaming has been introduced for mobility. Uh, some time after that, uh, GPS has been introduced or known as 2.5G and it, it introduced packet switch technology in order to transport non-voice data such as multimedia message, telecontrol and was, um, was clearly opening the door for the internet and the IP data network. Contrary to circuit switch technology, packet switch do not allocate a dedicated path, but each packet is descriptive and allows to be routed by the cellular infrastructure. So basically via uh, source address and destination address. Yeah. That allows more flexibility and more parallel user because you can submit a lot of packet from different, uh, to different destination and from different um, uh, uh, submitter and that's a low yeah for sure more flexibility. In 2002 with 3G did data becomes more important and that was not just uh, an add-on and it was clearly targeting internet usage with uh, higher throughput and uh, 4G uh, introduced uh, was really a break here because 4G is a pure packet switch network. This is all a null IP network and PS voice, uh, packet switch voice has completely disappeared from, from, from 5G or, or LTE. So in 4G context, voice should take place either over LTE this is called voice over LT, so this is basically voice over IP, or using a circuit switch fallback, fallback so switching the, the modem to, uh, to an older technology like GSM. 5G that recently landed is a continuation of 4G and improves the throughput, reduce the latency, and allow a more massive concurrent usage of, of cellular network. Today, the theoretical speed of 5G is about uh, 10 gigabit per second. So in terms of hardware, modems are extremely complex and also expensive. So if you look at modem phone SOC die today, you will see that the modem IP occupy a large portion of the silicon, often larger than the CPU cluster and 
well, yeah, well, quite comparable to the GPU. And with the arrival of 5G, some uh, some SOC even have uh, different IP for the 5G and one for 4G and other technology. That's mostly the complexity is mostly because everything is implemented inside the modem and all the complexity is hidden to the host. And the, the, the cellular technology are intrinsically complex uh, and modem have to deal and support several technology, GSM, GPS, AQ, 5G, and modems include all the components to perform this, the time sensitive operation, the encoding, modulation, audio processing, and so on. So a modem is today usually similar to a kind of microcomputer or even a dedicated SOC and is composed of RAM, CPU, ROM, and so on. And you can also find today some modems that run a uh, Linux-based firmware. So now uh, all Linux is dealing with that and all modems are integrated in, in Linux. For this, it's, it's really important to, to start at the beginning in order to, to understand the current situation of, of uh, modem support in Linux. So init initially, all was about transporting voice. Uh, modem usually include all the necessary components to directly under audio, so audio, the audio analog peripherals such as the speaker or, or the microphone, and process this analog audio and put the voice over the, over the air via the cellular network. So from host perspective, um, the host was only in charge of controlling the modem. And a simple way to, to do that is via a serial link, such as uh, UART. And that was at the beginning, the main control pass. So over the year, ET commands became a popular, then a de facto standard for that. So ET command is uh, a text or ASCII based command response set. It's quite human friendly and from, from Linux point of view, it's mostly about using serial communication tools such as a, a minicom or micropom microcom to open the serial uh, the serial port via the TTI framework and submitting command to the modem for performing a phone call, uh, access SIM contact, and so on. Um, then came support, uh, data support with 2.5G, so GPS, that bring W1 capability and allowing to perform what we call data call that will allow the modem to submit packets and in, in all contexts, IP packets. So initially, as data was mostly an add-on feature and the easier way to, allow seri to, to do that was to allow serial to transport directly the network packet. For this, modem were allowing to switch the serial link in a specific data mode in order to transport binary data instead of the regular ET commands, either via the main serial link, if there is only one serial, or via a secondary link in order to allow parallel ET commands. The usual protocol for this is PPP, which is point-to-point -point protocol. And this protocol simply allow to, uh, to submit network packet over, over a serial link. In terms of integration, there is a, a user space daemon, typically PPPD for PPP daemons, that perform all the data calls set up to get the what we call the PDP context, so setting up the connection, sending the, 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 the right AT command to, to start the connection. And once the, the data mode uh, is ready, and once the serial switch to data mode, uh, PPPD is going to attach the serial to the PPP line discipline. And PPP line discipline is simply the kernel implementation of the PPP protocol, which in turn, expose uh, the, TT, the, the protocol as a regular network interface in order to be linked directly into the Linux network stack. So on top, PPP is connected to network stack and 
at the lower level, it's it's uh, encode and decode data to and from the, the, the serial link. Yeah, so at some point, uh, personal cellular modem started to be more publicly available, typically in the form of a USB device, either as a regular USB stick or through a PCMC core that in turn uh, has a USB infrastructure inside. So at that time, the obvious way to inf interface the modem was just to replicate the old interfacing scheme and just do serial over USB for ET and network command. So, so yeah, so the, the modem basically in Linux was exposing some TTY USB or TTY ECM devices. But USB allowing mixing several logical link or several logical interfaces over, uh, uh, over one link. Uh, the vendors, the modem vendors started also to integrate additional USB interfaces for debugging or other feature like firmware upgrade or even other stuff like GPS and, and so on. So serial was fine, but it's not really optimized for transferring network packets because after all, it's a byte by byte link. On new 4G and 5G throughput and latency require more packet oriented link. That's why some vendors started to expose dedicated USB interface in order to directly submit and transfer data packets using network uh, USB interface and yeah, really optimize for, for USB transfer. So there are some vendor, uh, there are some vendor interfaces for that like QMAP and the USB IF also, the, uh, also specify a, a specific uh, interface and protocol, which is MBIM, and that's a law, for example, to aggregate IP packets to support mixing of several uh, PDP contexts, so to have several connections at the same time. And all these, um, all these interfaces are, have been um, introduced with, uh, with USB. And that's a bit the same for the control pass. So for the control pass, Vondor also started to, to implement and to create their own binary control protocol that allow more flexibility with support, for example, for events, for discovering services, and to make them easier programmatically controllable. So by controllable by a, a daemon or by a tool. So all of these bring us today with quite a fragmented modem interfaces. Um, some of them still use the standard serial infrastructure with ET command and data over TTY. Some use binary for control protocol and, uh, and uh, legacy uh, PPP interface. Some implement network in interface, proper network interface. And some devices also mix uh, several of these interfaces. So th there is no exactly common rules to control a modem for, from user perspective. So that makes the thing a bit complex for user to, to control a modem and to control different modems the same way. Moreover, each modem is not represented as a unique device, like it could be with Wi-Fi, with a wireless dev, or for Bluetooth with a HCI device, but the modem feature itself is accomplished by a collection of multiple devices. So multiple TTY, multiple USB interfaces, and that does not really uh, facilitate the modem integration. But fortunately, some tools have been developed to take care of that. The most active project is Modem Manager. It's a daemon that provides a unified high-level interface for controlling modems. And these, regardless of the protocol and technique used uh, to access that modem. A user can then use the Modem Manager client, MMMCLI. This is a command line tool that's allowed to control modem. So user can control all the different modems the same way. And uh, the Modem Manager performs the abstraction of each modem. Uh, modem Manager also try to group all the devices that perform the W1 function together. So all the TTY and, and uh, other interface that are related to, to a modem, Modem Manager will group 
all, all of them and try to expose a virtual W1 uh, devices. Uh, Modem Manager is, however, usually uh, integrated with other tools and it usually controlled by, for example, by a network daemon, like Network Manager. And from user perspective, it's it's more about uh, using the UI to control uh, to control the modem in order to enter the APN, the SIM pin, if there is a pin for the SIM, and so on. So here you see just this is just the output of uh, MMM client uh, modem description. So here it's a USB modem, and as you can see, the modem manager expose expose detects that modem, and it's it's control the different ports that are that compose that modem. So here we have some TTY for AT command, we have some network interfaces, and modem manager is able to, to catch all of them. And that makes the, the thing much more easier for the user that do, do not have to take care about sending AT command or some, sending some, some specific command. Okay, so now moving on a story about 5G modem integration. So, as you may know, Qualcomm modems are at the core of many modems modules and many vendor modules, such as Tele, Quetel, or Serial, serial modules. And that's especially with the new 5G project. So, if USB is still a, a popular abuse for that and a, a straightforward way to, to to integrate modem. More and more modem also offer PCI interface for the embedded cases, such as when you have a laptop, a gateway, or some robotic stuff, it will, it's usually use a PCI use. And PCI also offer, for the same uh, generation, uh, PCI also offer better support, lowest latency, and lowest power consumption. The point is that today, the there is no mainline driver for the Qualcomm uh, PCI-based modem. Um, so we had to, to, to develop that. So all the point is that all the latest Qualcomm modem are all based on the same protocol, which is MHI for Modem Host Interface. It's a protocol based on chair memory and rig buffer to transport data, a bit like VirtIO. It offers a logical communication infrastructure on top of PCI and also had the concept of uh, virtual channels that are logical channels, a bit similar to what USB does with endpoints. So that allows mixing several logical communication pipes over PCI. So in theory, M uh, MHI is not tightly coupled to PCI, but uh, that's in, uh, in practice, that's mostly used with uh, Qualcomm PCI devices. And also, it's not really linked to modem because MHI does not specify any modem-specific stuff. It, it's just a, a communication, uh, communication uh, facility. On Linux side, uh, a first tentative to upstream this MHI protocol has been done in 2018, but it has been discontinued after a few iterations. In 2020, uh, this has been revived by Linaro and finally, finally merged to mainline thanks to Maninavam contribution. So it has been merged preliminary and mainly because of some integration of a Wi-Fi driver on, of an Atheros Wi-Fi driver, ATH11 key, that was sitting on top of MHI. So MHI has been pushed as a virtual Linux bus on which each MHI channel, or on which the MHI channel are represented as uh, dedicated devices. So MHI is a bus and the channel are just devices on, on that and the MHI core is responsible to implement the MHI specification and the BUS operation. On the lower side, we have what is called MHI controller and that are supposed to implement the physical BUS operation. So when MHI core needs to write a register, the MHI controller performs the implementation of, of the write, whatever the BUS is. 
So for integrating Qualcomm PCI-based modem, the first step was to create that uh, MHI controller. So we created for this a PCI driver that is that the goal is to connect the PCI device to the MHI core. We name it as MHI PCI generics since it's device agnostic. Actually, it does not take care of what the device is and which feature is exposed by the device. And the goal is, yeah, just to implement the low level operations that are uh, required by MHI. And uh, yeah, so regarding modems, the modems usually expose several channels. Some are for control and some other are for data. So in terms of control, uh, we expose control channel uh, such as MBIM and QM, QMI and DIAG, and all these can, these protocols are already implemented in Modem Manager because they are already used by USB variant modem. So this was mostly about replicate, replicating the USB architecture and expose the control channel via simple character device that are read and written by, by Modem Manager. So device for MBIM, for QMI, and so on. In terms of data pass, we created a dedicated network driver that is op optimized to transfer network packet over MHI. Uh, and yeah, in terms of data, the Qualcomm-based modem are usually supporting uh, transferring raw IP data, so just raw IP packet, but also some other format like QMAP or MBIM that support IP packet aggregation, uh, checksum offload, uh, multi PDN support. And after that, everything we had to do is to tune modem manager to support these modems, mainly via UDEV, simple UDEV rules to tell modem manager that to point on, on the right devices. And after that, we have been able to detect the modem by modem manager. And it was, yeah, surprisingly, easy to integrate. And because of the similarity with USB, the, it was yeah, straightforward to integrate. And, and yeah, at the end, we have been able to uh, connect the modem and everything is from user perspective, everything is quite simple, as simple at least as Wi-Fi. It can use, user can use the UI to connect to the, to the, to the selected APN and access the internet. So that's, that's it for my presentation. If you have any question, my email is here and I'm running late. So I'm going to, to take the question on the offline on the chat if I can. And yeah, thank you for, for, for joining and have a good day.